In this video, I want to talk about resonance, but first let's remind ourselves what sp2 hybridized atoms look like. So this carbon is sp2 hybridized. So that means it has three identical sp2 hybridized orbitals, and then it has one unhybridized p orbital. And we know we get covalent bonds when we have these orbitals overlapping. When we have these orbitals overlapping with their electrons, we get these covalent bonds. And that's what's going on with these covalent bonds. However, we also know we can have these pi bonds, these double bonds, and we get these pi bonds when we have p orbitals overlapping. So we know the shape of these p orbitals are these dumbbell shapes and they can have electrons and they can overlap and that's where we get these double bonds from. And the reason why I'm focusing on these sp2 hybridized atoms is because you'll commonly see resonance associated with sp2 or sp hybridized atoms. So let's look at this, car, this co compound with this carbon anion. We know this compound can go through resonance. It can go through resonance structures, where essentially these lone pairs of electrons fall down, forming a double bond. So we see that here. And then when it does that, it pushes these pi electrons up onto this oxygen, uh, pushing these, these blue electrons up onto the oxygen, creating this, this compound. So we know this compound can go through resonance. It can go through resonance, forming this structure. However, why do we go through resonance in the first place? Why does this compound go through resonance forming this structure and then forming, of course, a hybrid resonance structure? Why is this occurring in the first place? Well, before when we had this compound, we had this formal charge of negative one on this carbon atom. So we had a lot of localized negative charge with a high charge density, which we know is unstable. Localized strong charge densities aren't stable. However, if we go through resonance, we can delocalize that negative charge. We can spread out some of that negative charge onto the oxygen. And then we form this resonance structure where again, we're delocalizing that negative charge over a larger region. Instead of that negative charge being localized on this carbon or that negative charge being localized on this oxygen, now that formal charge of negative one is delocalized over a larger region, over these three atoms, with a small charge density, which we know is stable. So that's why we go through resonance in the first place, to delocalize charge so we don't have localized high charge density regions and something important to realize so this compound can go through resonance but what is resonance what's going on when this when this guy goes through resonance well really what's going on is we're simply just rearranging these pi electrons these are ele these electrons are in pi orbitals these p orbitals so we're just rearranging the electrons in these p orbitals for example we know this compound we can we can focus on it just th showing its p orbitals and again, we know these atoms have these p orbitals. For example, we know this oxygen is sp2 hybridized. So this oxygen is sp2 where it has one sp2 hybridized orbital, another sp2 hybridized orbital, and another sp2 hybridized orbital. And then this one is forming this covalent bond. This one has these lone pairs of electrons. This sp2 hybridized orbital has these lone pairs of electrons. And then we know we also have a pi or a p orbital, an unhybridized p orbital. And that's what we're focusing on. I'm focusing on these p orbitals for all these atoms. Because that's where resonance occurs. When this guy goes through resonance, it's rearranging these electrons in the p orbitals. All these other sp2 hybridized orbitals, this one with its lone pairs of electrons and etc. These aren't active. They're not. They're not involved in this resonance uh, structure. When we go through resonance, we're rearranging the electrons in the p orbitals, and it's only the electrons in the p orbitals that get rearranged. So again, so what exactly is going on? Well, we said these lone pairs of electrons fall down, and when they fall down, they push these pi electrons up onto this oxygen. And when we do that, we form this structure, where again, these electrons fell down. They fell down, forming this double bond. And when they did that, they pushed these pi electrons up here, for, forming this, forming this. So really, what's going on? Well, again, we're just rearranging these pi electrons. So just focusing on the pi electrons, we said these electrons scooch down, forming that double bond. So what's going on is these two electrons in this p orbital scooch down, forming a double bond. And we see that. We, we form that double bond. We see these two electrons created this double bond. But we know when we do that, when these electrons fall down, we also push these pi electrons up onto the oxygen. So when these electrons fall down, forming that double bond, they're also pushing these electrons up onto this oxygen. We said these electrons are being pushed up onto the oxygen. So now instead of the electrons here, now the electrons are both on the oxygen. These two electrons turn into these, similarly to how these two electrons turned into this. Because again, these electrons fall down, forming that double bond, and then these electrons are pushed up. 
So that's what's going on. We're simply just rearranging these electrons in these p orbitals. Instead of this p orbital having two and these each having one, we go through the resonance. So now this one has two and each of these have one. And again, once we form this resonance structure, we can go back, where again, essentially these electrons fall down, forming a double bond. And when they do that, they push these pi electrons up onto this carbon. So again, these electrons scooch down, forming a double bond. So we see that we form that double bond. And when, when we do that, when they scooch down, they push the, these electrons here. They, we said they push these electrons up to here. So now these electrons instead of here, now both the electrons are on this p orbital. So that's what resonance is. And that's what's going on in resonance. It's rearranging the electrons in the p orbitals. And that's why it occurs with sp2 and sp atoms, because they're the only ones that have these p orbitals. So now let's go through a different resonance structure. Let's say we have this compound. This compound can go through resonance, where the electrons scooch down, forming this double bond, forming this resonance structure. However, again, why are we doing this resonance in the first place? Because again, we get to delocalize that charge. Originally, we had this, this carbon with this positive charge, this formal charge of positive one, and you can count the electrons and use the formula for formal charge, and you can see this carbon has a formal charge of positive one. So originally, we had this formal charge of positive one localized on this carbon. However, when we go through resonance, now the nitrogen has a formal charge of positive one. You could use the formula for formal charge, and you see the nitrogen now has a formal charge of positive one. And then we go through these resonance structures forming this hybrid structure where now that positive charge is delocalized over two atoms. So instead of that, that, that positive charge localized with a high charge density on carbon, or instead of it localized with a high charge density on nitrogen, now it's delocalized. And again, that's why we go through resonance. But something important to note is they go through resonance forming this resonant hybrid structure. However, this resonant hybrid structure more closely resembles this particular resonance structure. Because again, we know we can have these two resonance structures which form this hybrid structure. However, this is the dominant resonance structure, so therefore the hybrid resonance structure more closely resembles this one. But why? Why is that? Well, when you have resonance structures and you're wondering which one is the dominant one, you see, first of all, the most important rule is looking for an octet. And you notice that this one breaks the octet rule. This carbon doesn't have an octet, so therefore this breaks the octet rule, so therefore this is the more dominant resonance structure. So that's why this, this is the most resembles the, the hybrid structure. The next thing is to, to look for charges and see if you can destroy charges. And, and we can't. We're stuck with the, with the charge in either resonance structure. So, so in this situation, that won't have an impact. But let's say we had this compound with a negative formal charge on this oxygen and a positive formal charge on this carbon, we can go through resonance where the electrons fall down. And when they fall down, we form this structure with no formal charge. So therefore, this would be the dominant resonance structure. So, so that's another thing is, is you want to destroy charges because, again, nature hates strong charge densities. And again, the last thing is if you're stuck with the charge, let's say you're stuck with the charge, then the resonance structure where the most electronegative atom that atom should get the negative charge. In the resonance structure where the most electronegative atom gets the negative charge is the dominant resonance structure. And the same thing if you have a very electropositive atom. That atom should have the positive charge. And the resonance structure that has that atom with the positive charge is the dominant resonance structure. But again, so we know this guy goes through resonance. We know it goes through resonance. And again, what's going on when this guy goes through resonance? Again, we're just rearranging these pi electrons. Again, focusing on just the p orbitals with their pi electrons. Originally, we had two electrons in this p orbital. But then we go through resonance, where now both p orbitals get an electron. So again, we're just simply rearranging these, these pi electrons, where again, they scooch down, forming that double bond. So that's that's what's going on. These electrons scooch down, forming that double bond. We're simply just rearranging these pi electrons.